with me now Today, I want to share with you my top Light and Soul class in Planetside 2. I'm going to be discussing loadouts, weapons and their attachments. I will try and give you some helpful tips along the way on using these classes, and hopefully you will learn something new from a different perspective. So, I'm going to be starting with the abilities. Then I'll move on to the suit slots, utilities, grenades and finally wrap each class up with my favourite weapon for each faction. Now, I particularly like this class because of the versatility it offers while playing it. I find that it works best in the biolab situation overall, but it can be most beneficial also in amp stations, tech plants and towers. This is mainly because you can position yourself at a different angle from where your enemy will normally be looking at, which will enable you to flank to a better position where the enemy may not expect you from. When playing Light Assault, I find that the ability that suits me the most is the skirmisher jump jets. These are the most versatile in most situations. They give you fast enough upward movement to get onto most buildings and also allow you to get where you need to. However, you are heavily punished when moving in a direction with these. I find the Icarus jump jets are great if you have a large ceiling height to work with. They will jet you completely vertical and allow you to get away from the enemy's firing line rapidly. This can normally work well when using C4. You're able to quickly jump vertical to a safe height and explode the C4. But of course this is highly situational. Now I probably use my class differently from most so please only take what you need from this and work out what is best for you in the long run. If you are a player that uses cover well to your advantage then the best suit slot for you will be the advanced shield capacitor. This gives you a fast shield recharge rate when out of combat for 4 seconds on max rank with a total cert cost of 341. If you run advanced shield capacitor you will be best matched with medkits as a utility slot, as your shield will be forced to recharge quicker when you are back at a full health, and it is always difficult to find a medic on top of a rooftop. If you are like me and rush into stupid situations, then nano weave armor will mostly suit your playstyle. Now, it will cost you a grand total of 1,211 certs to unlock, but it will give you a 20% increased resistance to small arms fire. If you can't afford the certs right now, Rank 4 will still help you and a 15% bonus for only 211 certs. But overall, you will probably be best to use cover and stick with the advanced shield capacitor until you have generated enough certs to unlock the max rank. Utility and grenade slots are best suited depending on the situation. I find that flash grenades are great when working in a squad before rushing the point, but you can never beat a good frag grenade for trying to make the enemy run away in a wild panic. If you are new to the game, you will now be outfitted with the auxiliary shield as standard. Now this will work great with the advanced shield capacitor as it gives you an extra 50 health to your shield. But for me, medkits are a great addition. Once unlocked, they are unlocked to all other classes and simply unlocking free will allow you to get back into the fight much quicker than using the auxiliary shield. You can pick the first two levels up for only 150 sets. Now, finally onto weapons. I personally am a carbon kind of guy with the NC I do love the Razer GD23 and the GD7 FSCQC. Now, I only want to recommend one gun per faction, as otherwise you'll still have me talking about how much I love the Cyclone, and that will just trigger half the community. Or, just like we don't talk about shotguns. So, to keep this short and sweet, back to carbines. The Razer GD23. Where do I start? This gun is great for medium to long ranges. So don't start rushing into CQC as you may find yourself in a pickle. If you push onto a point, try aiming down sight, but hit fire as sort of possible if you need to finish someone off quickly. Just try not to go toe to toe with a heavy, otherwise you might find yourself in big trouble in all China. I'm trying not to make this into a weapon review. So to unlock this gun, it will require 650 sets or 499 daybreak. It has 550 rounds per minute with a 560 meter second muzzle velocity with a 2 times headshot multiplier. Now, where this gun excels is the fact that it's slow firing. Because of its slow firing, the gun is much more controllable than other choices available, and we're able to get more headshots at a longer range. To get the most out of the gun, you will need to equip with this weapon the Compensator, the Forward Grip, and the High Velocity Ammunition. This will cost you an additional 300 sets. 
For scopes, I use the one times, but some people may prefer the night vision or the two times scope. It all depends on the situation. As a TR variant to this carbon, I would suggest the HC1 Cougar. This is similar to the Razor GD23, as it is the hardest hitting carbine available to the Terran Republic. This gun costs either 1000 certs or 699 daybreak, which is a little bit more than the Razor. It has 550 RPM, which is the same as the Razor, but the muzzle velocity is slightly lower at 520 meters a second. It also carries the same 2x headshot multiplier. It has high ADS accuracy and bullet velocity, as well as the second lowest recoil for the TR carbines. Like the Razor, it's not best served as a CQC weapon, as the low fire rate is unable to kick out the rounds quickly enough, and it's best used as a medium range weapon. The same as the Razor, you will need to equip the Compensator, forward grip and high velocity ammunition, costing an additional 300 sets also. Moving on to the VS carbines. This is a bit of a tougher call to say something is comparable. I think the closest you can get to this is the Pulsar C, but unlike other VS weapons, including other Pulsar variants, which shoot accurate projectiles at modest fire rates and mid-tier damage, the Pulsar C deals more damage per shot, fires slower and it has a higher recoil similar to most NC weapons. It costs 650 sets to unlock or 499 daybreak. The fire rate is slightly higher at 577 rounds per minute, but the muzzle velocity is even slower at only 550 meters a second. It still has the two times headshot multiplier. The attachments differ slightly with this gun as you get the compensator and the high velocity for 200 sets, but unlike the other two, you will have to find 200 sets to unlock the advanced forward grip, giving you 33% horizontal recoil compared to the standard forward grip at only 25%. As the weapon has heavy recoil and high damage with a slow fire rate, it is best used at medium ranges while burst firing and using ADS. Although the weapon has a respectable hip fire, many players consider the Pulsar C as a more controllable version of the NC Mercenary however. So to finish off, I know the carbine probably isn't going to be the most effective weapon for some situations. But if you are up high and in hidden places, it's always best to have a medium range weapon to engage people at distance compared to shooting those at close range, which is more suited for an SMG. If the fight changes, you push more for control points, then an SMG might be more of a best friend for you in these situations. I'm sure we can argue about this all day, but overall this is a good starting point for the new guys and I hope it clarifies an effective fighting build for some people who are struggling with all the decisions and choices to make. Thanks for watching. See you next time. What we do here is go back, 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 back. Oh, come on. Bye for now. Fuck a wreck to Gino. Mate, you're a walking meme. Oh, yeah, fuck. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, oh. oh shit. <laughs>